Dedrick Colvin was holding a toy gun made to look like a Beretta when he was shot twice by BPD officer Thomas Miller. He is expected to survive. However, the case raises serious questions about the conduct of the police force in Baltimore. To discuss some of those questions, I'm joined now in studio by Ronald Hampton of the National Police Accountability Project. He's also a retired D.C. police officer. Uh, welcome, uh, Ronald. Um, police Commissioner Kevin Davis said yesterday when this news broke that his officers got out of a car and engaged with a person who looked like he had a gun in his hand. That's what we're supposed to do, and that's what cops do. However, witnesses say uh, Colvin was shot while running away. Is that what cops are supposed to do? No, and they're supposed to be, uh, their behavior is supposed to be in line with Tennessee versus Gardner that talks about what they would call a fleeing felon rule. This guy wasn't, this kid wasn't accused or, uh, of any crime, nor had he committed any crime. So, and, and the commissioner made another point that I think is a mistake. He, he, he sort of uh, talked about the, what his officers, the behavior of his officers, and sort of said that he think that they were doing the right thing. I mean, that's sort of making the decision of the mm -hmm. case before the case has been truly investigated. And, and I worry about that also in the context of that if he says that it's all right, then what are the investigators going to say? Because they work for him. They're right. not going to come out and say something that's totally different than what he says also. Right, and this is something that we see repeatedly, not Absolutely. just with Commissioner Davis, but in, in uh, police departments across the country, this sort of uh, decision of yeah. innocence yeah. before yeah. even the investigation is complete. I want to make another point, though. According to local media, a witness named Brian said um, this, that the teen turned towards the officers, but he wasn't turning the gun towards them, and I'm positive, the witness say. I heard him say, it's not real. He said, it's not real, and and that quick, the male officer shot him twice in the leg. How does that happen? Well, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, we know their behavior is suspect. And, and, and they didn't even talk about the officers in the context that they had on plain clothes, giving people the impression that right. they were in uniform. And these officers were not in uniform. They were in plain clothes. And, and, you know, I think what happened to the young man is a result of the attitude that exists in our community when it comes to the police. When we see a police, and, what, and, and to think that young people don't know the police, even if they're not in uniform, they do, but they also know their behavior because of their history in the community. So he probably did run, but you're not supposed to run after him Right, and, and then people... shoot him while he's running or, 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 or something like that. That is not part of the Commissioner process. Davis always says, oh, I don't know why he ran, but I, I've heard people in Baltimore say, well, look what happened to Tamir Rice. He didn't run, and he was shot within two seconds of officers arriving on the scene. That's and right. um, these officers, you said, they were plainclothes officers. They were part of the same unit that was involved in the police-involved killing in Baltimore last month and several right. others. What role, really, do plainclothes units serve in the police force? Well, doing undercover investigations. Uh, some are detectives. Usually they wear suits and those kind of things. But there's a lot of people who work in undercover capacities in police department, use plain, not, uh, not decal cars. And they're doing surveillance kind of work. They're doing interview. They're uh, stake out looking at situations. Or they're, when, when they get a call, for example, somebody selling drugs, then they'll send one of those units so they can look at them and and observe them before they respond but to it. But they're not supposed to be the ones policing the community. No, ma'am, they're not. No, they're not. As a matter of fact, most policies and practices have those kind of guys not getting involved in, uh, say, situations of traffic stop, stopping people, walking up on them, and all those kind of things, because they're not, even though they, they still look like the police when they're out in uniform, the public know that they're the police. And in our community, the response, unfortunately, for young people when they see guys like that is to run. We have about a minute left, um, but Commissioner Davis, something else he did repeatedly um, in talking about this case is describe Colvin as a young man over and over again. We're actually talking about a 14-year-old. Uh, we have been showing viewers images. I think they can decide whether or not he looks like a young man. What is this? Um, well, uh, it, it, it has existed in the police description of young black men and even black teenagers, that they see them as men rather than as children. And the 14-year-old, 13-year-old is a child. And, but the, when we are talking about young black men, they're talking about teenagers. And so they have a tendency to sort of stretch the description in the kind of way that gives the impression that this is a grown man, somebody who may be 
13, 14 years old, maybe five, six, five, seven, and he may not have a lot of weight on him, but that the police officer sees this individual and the description is not of a teenager, but of a young black man. And that gives an altogether different impression. Right, and they can then say that they felt threatened by That's someone. exactly right. That's what we have to that's a lot of times the, the results of what we see. All right, Ronald Hampton, retired DC, DC police officer, uh, now with the National Police Accountability Project. We always uh, appreciate your, your insight. Thank you very much.